last home, question. Which last creates question. better people. Dur forward. Last question, and then I'm going to let you go. Comments. Last question. We're out of time, sure, but I'm going to give you one more question. During Jim Crow, could your family have sure. existed? You are in an interracial marriage. Your wife is a, a, a white conservative yes. activist. Could your family have existed at all during Jim Crow? No, it could not, Joy. We okay. all know that. But that's why I am blessed to live in America today as opposed to America during that time. But we cannot ignore the realities of not having fathers in homes. That is important for black people today and all people today as we and move what forward for a better America. We are out of time. What I'm grateful for is that we do not live in the Jim Crow era and that fathers do not face the so threat of I. lynching. I'm very grateful and of that. Perhaps don't bring up Jim Crow when you're trying to make that example. Representative Bri Byron Donalds, thank you for being here. And we'll be right back. So you all have just seen the video <laughs> of it was Representative Byron Donalds. He said that the black family unit was better under Jim Crow. And then you had the lady there, the news anchor, um, who was asking journalists who said, could your family have existed under Jim Crow? She said, your wife is white. So would you have been able to be successful under Jim Crow? He went and described the wife as a conservative activist as well. You know, so just even with certain ideas that you would have been able to have, would that have still been okay under that era? You know, let's say you had a black wife, would you have still been able to accomplish whatever you're, you've been able to accomplish thus far under that era with everything that's going to be going on with that? You know, um, now the whole reason why this was brought in there is because he was saying that we don't have enough fathers in the home. And yes, I 100% will say that is true. Okay, we see a lot of single parents out here and we see so much so of a broken family, black family dynamic. So I understand that she's making the point. This has nothing to do with your situation. You're bringing up Jim Crow and you being a black man who is married to a non-black person. That doesn't even make any sense for you and yourself. That's why she ended up saying <laughs> she checked him. She said, how about don't bring that up? Because your own personal relationship, you it doesn't even make sense because it would have gone against it and it would not have gone well for you, you know, overall. Um, so that's the thing. Um, but it's to say that it was good for you. It was good for the black family. Now, some people will look and say, well, back then, like our grandparents, they were living better than we are, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, they were also, even though they were getting paid less than we are you know, if they're getting paid, let's say five, $10, $5 an hour or something, let's just say, of course, the numbers are different for whoever you work, but let's just say you're getting paid like five bucks an hour or something. And you'd be like, okay, but I'm getting paid $20 an hour. Yeah, but everything is so much more expensive anyways. But we also had, you know, you had the war on drugs. Okay. You're giving people these crazy sentences for having drugs. You have the three strike policy and we all know who's affected more than the other people. Okay. Um, because you go and look and you say, okay, well, we got the war on drugs. We got to go and lock you up. It's a, it's a crime. We got to go and lock you up. We got the opioid thing that's going on. You can look in Philadelphia, for example. I mean, there are people who it just is what it is. They look like zombies. So you look at that and then it's like, ah, oh, well, I mean, they're ill though. You know, so one group is ill. One group is criminal. You know, so that was also another thing. It's just overall, there's been a whole bunch of systematic things to break up the black family. Another thing would be, hey, if you want some government assistance, let's say welfare, for example, mm, you got the baby dad living in the house. Ooh, I guess you don't need that money that bad. As opposed to if you guys aren't together, okay, we'll give you a check. What? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you know, so there's a whole bunch of different things that actually go into it. You know, locking people up, over policing of the black man. You take away the black man, what you gonna have? You're just gonna have the black woman. If you got kids, now you got a single mother. Okay, but I actually wanted to get into Jim Crow in specific since this is what he was talking about. And this is just from history.com. This is Jim Crow laws were a collection of state and local statutes um, that legalized racial segregation. Named after a black minstrel show character, 
the laws which existed for about a hundred years from the post-Civil War era until 1968 were meant to marginalize African Americans by denying them the right to vote, hold jobs, get an education, or other opportunities. And you don't think that, so you're saying, well, during that time, you guys, I mean, the black family was great. You had no choice but to be together, <laughs> okay? I'm not saying that it's good that we're separated now. Definitely not. But I'm saying during that time, everyone was against you more so, what I would say, than what we have now, okay? So if everyone's against you, it said you couldn't, let's deny your right to vote. What? A whole group? Of people we can't vote okay you can't hold jobs or you're not going to be able to even get a good one can't get education so you had nothing but okay we got to stay in our little circles we have to stay in our little circles we have to do this we have to do this because everyone is coming after you but let's continue those who attempted to uh, defy Jim Crow laws often face arrests fines jail sentences violence and death so Byron, that would have been you in that category right there, okay? So you wouldn't have been able to be a part of any family, all right? Uh, Jim Crow laws expand. At the start of the 1880s, big, big cities in the South were not wholly beholden to Jim Crow laws and Black Americans found more freedom in them, all right? Um, this led to substantial Black populations moving to the cities and as the decades progressed, white city dwellers demanded more laws to limit opportunities for, <laughs> for African Americans. So even when you're doing your own thing, heck, you can even look at Black Wall Street and there's been many other Black Wall Streets as well, okay? But you can even look at that, all right? Where you're just doing your own thing and then it's like, you know what? I don't like that y'all prospering over there. I mean, what about us? That's the problem. You know, anytime you're doing something, you're minding your own business, you just minding your own business, doing your own thing with your own people. It was a problem. It was always, now we got to do something to marginalize them even more. Now we got to do something because they're too successful. They got doctors, lawyers, grocery stores. Oh, I don't like that. Let, let's go and throw some bombs on it. Okay, let's look at Oscarville, for example, <clears throat> Lake Lanier. That's why people think that it's, you know, haunted or has some kind of spiritual connection because a whole bunch of people died over there. You know, let's go and do something. Let's go and riot. Let's go and destroy their stuff. And then we'll feel good about ourselves. And that's what has been going on. All right, but let's continue. It says Jim Crow laws soon spread across the country with even more force than previously. Public parks were uh, forbidden for African Americans to enter, and theaters and restaurants were segregated. Of course, you had your white only, um, you know, in, uh, your white only water fountains, for example, or black people go through the back of the restaurant, whites to the front, back of the bus, etc. Segregated waiting rooms in bus and train stations were required as well as water fountains, as I said, restrooms, building entrances, elevators, cemeteries, even amusement park cashier windows. So for you to go, and I'm talking about Brian Donalds. So for you to go and say, well, it was better for the black family, you know, but you couldn't have existed. That's what the, that's what the anchor was saying. She's like, you couldn't have existed though, because you don't, that doesn't apply to you though. Laws forbade African Americans from living in white neighborhoods. Segregation was enforced for public pools, phone booths, hospitals, asylums, jails, and residential homes for the elderly and handicapped. Some states required separate textbooks for black and white students. New Orleans mandated the segregation of prostitutes according to race. In Atlanta, African Americans in court were given a different Bible from white people from white people to swear on but it's all the same whatever marriage and cohabitation between white and black people was strictly forbidden in most southern states you would have been in jail sir <laughs> okay it was not uncommon so you see so you see still if all these things are saying nah black and white people y'all y'all can't get together at all 
of course you're going to see more with uh, black and you know black men and black women as well okay of course there's other things that's a part of that too um but that's one of the things you know you share you know the same struggles and whatnot but that is also one of the things if the, if you could possibly if you're saying okay well you got to get with alex or you got to get with britney which one okay one alex is black britney is white you get with Alex, you know, you're going to just be living your life how you've been living your life. You get with Brittany uh, during Jim Crow. Ah, you may get fine, jail, killed, or, you know, beat up. I mean, you want to take the gamble, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's one of those things. Um, it was not uncommon to see signs posted at town and city limits warning African-Americans that they were not welcome there. You also had like your little sundown and you still do towns as well. Okay. But I just thought that was very interesting how you can even go on TV to say something like that. To say, yeah, you know, it was, it was better for black people back in the day, you know. I mean, just think about slavery. I mean, we were all together working hard. That's when the black people worked the most. You would say, what? What? <laughs> Are we not looking at all the other conditions that were attributed to that as well? You know, so I thought that was a very ignorant thing to say. Obviously, the news anchor as well <laughs> thought that was a very ignorant thing for him to say. Hence why she was like, ah, maybe you shouldn't be saying that and ask, hey, would you have been successful during that time? Oh, of course not. No, 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 no. I, of course not. But I'm happy for now. No, we're not talking about now. You brought up Jim, Cr Jim Crow. We're talking about Jim Crow. Would you in your current family familial situation have worked? Yes or no? The answer nine times out of 10 would have been no. You know, so that's what the whole thing was about is like, why would you even bring something like that up? Why would you even bring that into discussion? But let me know what you think about said video down below.